Y'all gotta get with the program, champ. 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 Bring it, 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 champ. Y'all gotta get with the program, 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 champ. Good afternoon, everybody. How y'all feeling today? You are now vibing with Don Vito. I appreciate y'all tuning in to today's show. Yes, I'm early today. Today the show is at 1 p.m. You know, I got things to do later on, so I had to get somebody in early. You know, um, I have another uh, exciting guest coming to the show. It's different, you know. Um, we got another Harlem legend coming to the show. And uh, this is a little different from what we normally do. This is, show is going to be abroad. So um, I want y'all, you know, really check out this interview and, and you know, stay focused to the uh, to the vibing session. You know, it's a good one. It's going to be a good one. I'm going to make sure it's a good one. And um, we got a Harlem legend. He goes by the name of Ace. He was like Fritz, right hand man. And anybody know the story about Fritz? Fritz was that dude in Harlem that, you know, he looked out for a lot of cats in Harlem. Let's put it like that. You know, he was a... He's a well-known drug dealer. You know, he got a lot of money, and we're going to leave it like that. If you don't know about Fritz, you know, you can Google him. You can go to various um, bookstores or online, you know, stores, stuff like that. And there's a lot of different stories about Fritz. You know, Fritz is a Harlem legend. You know, he Fritz is one of the guys, you know, that you heard about in the Peyton Fold story that, you know, was the supplier for um, Rich Porter and various other people, you know. But, um... Fritz had a good reputation in Harlem, and, um, you know, we got people that's, you know, in his family, and you got friends of his that's keeping his name alive and stuff like that. So, you know, like I said, I want y'all to tune in, stay tuned in, and just, you know, check out the vibing session I'm going to have with um, Ace, you know. Ace has an amazing story himself, and he's going to come to the show, and he's going to tell you all about it. And, um, you know, right now, we're just going to wait for him. He'll be here in a few minutes. Um, I just want to see how y'all doing today, how y'all holding up out there, you know, New York City. New York City is like, you know, New York City is on fire, but people ain't acting like New York City is on fire. What you going to do? I mean, the smart ones going to survive and the not so smart ones going to have a problem, plain and simple. You know, but this, I think, is a, a Memorial Day weekend, this weekend, so it's going to be opening up stuff. You know, beaches and, and, and amusement parks, but they're going to have a lot of stipulations and limitations. So, but they want to open up so I guess people can relax and they can have a good time and stuff like that. So, you know, y'all be careful this weekend, you know, when y'all go out this weekend for the holiday, take it easy. You know, don't get carried away. I don't think that this thing is over. Keep your mask and your gloves with you at all times. And just enjoy yourself as much as you can. You know, um, like I said, you know, we still, this virus is still running rampant. You know, you know, a lot of people running around the streets, I, I see uh, still, uh, they think it's over just because it got warm. You know, it was like when it was cold, everybody had a mask on. Now it's warm, you know, it's a lot of social gatherings that, instead of social distancing. And, um, you know. You be mindful, you know, the blacks and the Latinos in our communities, we the ones that have been getting, you know, the highest uh, death uh, uh, ratings, let me put it like that. So stay focused. I want to thank y'all for tuning in. I see, you know, a lot of people 
to tune in and stuff like that. It's all good. You know, they want to see Ace come on and, uh, you know, him talk, you know, talk that talk about his life, about Fritz's life, you know, about Harlem, back in the days, stuff like that, you know. And that's what I do with my show. That's why it's called Vibing with Don Vito. You know, everybody that I bring to the show is people that I feel that have a story, you know, whether it be the streets, whether it be entertainment or, you know, whatever. You know, just have to have a story behind it and um, this way people can see your journey and see how, you know, you came up and stuff like that. And they can get a little more connected to you. And this, this platform is all about. Also, you know, a lot of people are afraid to, to go different places and, and, and do certain things. So the virtual thing is the way to go. So this is what we're going to do. You know, so I see a lot of people tuning in. They wait for Ace to pull up, you know, so we, I guess he'll be on in a few minutes. And uh, once he come on, we're going to talk to Ace and see what's good. See a lot of familiar faces on there. Okay. I appreciate y'all support. I definitely do. Definitely do. But another thing, you know, I'm a trainer, so anybody needs some exercise tips, you know, you need some help on how to keep yourself together because part of fighting this um, COVID-19 health crisis is staying in shape, keeping your immune system and your metabolism, stuff like that, running properly. So if you want some fitness tips, or if you want to, I do also do Facebook training, you know, FaceTime training, you know, you can hit me on um, fitness coach underscore big V. And we can set up a, a session. You know, I normally do a little training from 7 a.m. to 12 p.m. It's an hour-long session. You know, I'm a master trainer, so I'm expensive. But at the same time, I try to look out for people, you know, price-wise and stuff like that. But one thing I'm going to tell you, I guarantee results. And I got 20 years doing this. There ain't nothing I don't know about fitness. Nothing. Whether you're working out in the gym, whether you're working out in the park, whether you're working out in your house, whether you got weights or not, I can show you what to do. And I guarantee you, once you do an hour with me, you're going to feel it. If you don't believe me, you go to my, my Instagram. You can go right now while we wait for Ace to come on. You know, it's fitness coach underscore big V, V E E. And check out my work. You know, and, you, and once you see my content, you're like, yo, this dude is serious. I do everything, I do boxing. I do TRX, kettlebells, total body, uh, um, um, power lifting, um, body building, you know, I work with old people, you know, I work with, I work with the children, I work, I'm pre and postnatal certified, I do it all, you know, and I'm also um, advanced nutrition certified. I'm, I'm CPR, AED certified. You know, I got everything you want. You know, um, pre and post hat, uh, rehabilitation certified, stuff like that. So I'm that dude. Also, to tell you what to do as far as getting supplements, because as I've been watching online, a lot of people, you know, is trying to sell supplements now, you know? You know what I mean? You guys, you know, people that's, you know, I guess they try to get some extra money, whatever the case may be, which is cool. You know what I'm saying? Um, but uh, all of them supplements ain't what you think they are, you know? You know, it's, it's a lot of supplements that's good, you know? And the, but the key to the supplements is to work out. You know, there's no such thing as a miracle. If it was that easy to get in shape miraculously, everybody would be in shape. You know, so you got people running around, look, buy this. This drink, look at my body and all this type of stuff, yeah. All right. You gotta put that work in. You can get that body without that supplement if you know what you're doing. You know, but I'm not trying to knock nobody for, you know, getting their hustle on and advertising for these companies and trying to do their thing. Make sure they paying you probably though. You know, because believe me, whatever they paying you, they making triple. They making triple that money. But the key to the whole thing is you gotta work out. If you know how to eat properly, like the proper foods, vegetables, and different proteins, and stuff like that, and drink a lot of water, you can get in shape without supplements. 
But supplements do help you to um, get in shape a little bit quicker. But at the end of the day, you still got to work out. You know, you still got to put that work in. Then you got to be consistent. You can't work out one day, like Monday, and then work out Saturday, and then work out next Thursday, and think you're going to get in shape. Nah. You're going to feel good for the day, and that's it. You got to work out, and you got to work out consistently, you know, every week. Consistently the same month, and consistently, consistently, excuse me, throughout the year. And that's when you start seeing results. Mostly you start seeing results like every 90 days. You'll see a little change and stuff like that. And for you women, when you're lifting weights and you're doing stuff like that, okay, I see them trying to pull up, but I need to see that request button and then we can go live. You know, but for women who, there we go, okay, I think Ace pulling up. You know, the star of the show. Got Ace pulling up. We're going to talk about it. Thank y'all for hanging around while I gave y'all them fitness tips. We're going to talk about that some more. What up, Ace? Yo, what's happening, bro? How you doing? What up, Chad? Good to see you, man. You too as well. Yeah, 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 yeah. Welcome to my show, bro. All right. Welcome to my show. Thank how, you. How you doing today? I'm good. You know, I'm just taking it easy one day at a time, you know? Yeah. How's the weather? I mean, you know, how's the, how you dealing with this COVID thing, man? Well, you know, it's it's not really hard to deal with because, you know, it's sort of like an isolation type of aspect. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I went through that situation being isolated for a long time, so it really is like a norm to me, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But being in prison for 23 years for a crime I ain't commit, you know, it's something I had to deal with, you know, being away from people and stuff like that. It's the same scenario. You know, it's nothing different, you know? Yeah, yeah. You know, down here, we, we, we was on a 24-hour lockdown. You only could come out of your house at a certain time. You know, the same way they do in jail, with like going to commissary. Oh, yeah. So we got certain days that, you know, you could be able to buy food, go do buy food, go to the hallway store and do your banking. So you only got certain days, you know? Why did you other, than that, you, other than that, you get caught on the road, six months, guaranteed. Word. Yeah. Playing now. God damn. Nah, they ain't playing. They serious. Or you get a $5,000 fine. Hey, I ain't know yeah. that. Yeah, it is. Playing over here in New York, man. That's shit. Why they, got, why they got people on lockdown like that? Why? Because they're trying to contain the virus, you know, to make sure whoever they caught, they want to make sure they contain it okay. by everybody. Right. So if you have people minging around and they don't know who have it, it's going to spread more. Right. So right now, right now we only have 80 cases. We have... Uh, 15 cases in isolation and one serious case. Uh -huh. So they're coming back normal. You know, I mean, it's getting back there the way it was before. Right, but it's right. taking time, you know? Yeah, that's crazy. He said 23 and 1, huh? Like, that's jail for real, man. <laughs> exactly. That's crazy, <laughs> man. But anyway, man, at least you got your freedom, though. I mean, you know. I, but first and foremost, I want to thank you. Give me the opportunity to be able to speak on the show. You know, what I mean, I, I really represent that, and I appreciate it. You know, you're welcome, man. And you know, right. to me, I appreciate you coming on the show. You know why? Because you know, it, it's we have a lot of people telling um, stories about old Harlem legends or old Harlem, you know, people that was doing their thing out here in, in the streets. And it's, it, and I feel good talking to you because you know a lot of people talk about Fritz, and I never heard, heard nobody say nothing bad about Fritz. I heard about people talking about how Fritz was that dude looking out for everybody, but the closest, you know, one of, the closest person is his right-hand man, and I got him on the show, so thank you very much for coming to the show. Yeah, you're more than welcome, bro. Yeah, so um, so oh, why was um Fritz called the consignment king? Because he was that man, you know, he, he basically was taking care of everybody, you know, not just, you know, a few individuals. He was taking care of whole Harlem. He was taking care of dudes in the Bronx, people in Queens as well. Right. So that's why he considered, you know, the king of, co king of, co king of cocaine consignment because he was able to give it to everybody without having any money up front mm -hmm. because he trusted everybody. Everybody was, you know, trying to get some money. People was broke. So if they had an opportunity to make money, you know what I mean, they was going for it, you mm -hmm. know. So he, he trusted people that, you know, this is going to do the right thing. But, you know, you're always going to have some individuals that's going to fall short. Right. And you just got to you gotta deal with them accordingly, you know? Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. So how did you and um, Fritz first connect? 
<laughs> oh, rest in peace. I got to, everything goes back to Chuck. You know, rest in peace to me and Chuck. You know, we, me and him go back from when I was a child, you know, playing basketball with each one, teach one. Okay. So our relationships came up from like, you know, like the middle, the middle seventies all the way up. And then we got into the pit bulls and I was dealing with the pit bulls with him and everything. So he ended up introducing me to Fritz. Mm -hmm. But I originally started, I originally started off dealing, doing business with Chuck. Mm -hmm. So I, I, you know, when I started, I was moving so fast and he was telling me like, yo, listen, I, I can't handle how you moving. So, you know, he told me to go speak to Fritz and tell Fritz that he sent me. Right. You know? okay. And that's how it started. Right. So everything started from Chuck. But who was Chucky, though? Who was he, um... Chucky, Chucky was, uh, he was an individual that was into sports. You know, he was a, a coach for each one, teach one, and that's how I met him. You know, he used to run a game room called Martin's Game Room. Mm -hmm. And he was a very humble dude. You know, he took care of a lot of people, look out for people. If you got any situation, he's always there. Right. He was that kind of guy, you know? Yeah, yeah. From a childhood, you know, he was much older than me. He was like maybe like eight, nine years older than me. Mm -hmm. But we sort of like develop a bond from, you know, young. Right. You know, once I once I seen what type of individual he was, and you know, we kind of like you know, link and we kind of like vibe real strong. I started spending a lot more time around him because what he used to be telling me was very wiseful for me at that age. I got you. You know, I, I stuck around him for a long time. You know, mm -hmm. all the way up until I went to prison. Okay, so you, you, know? you said each one teach one to him. I remember that, man. Yeah. Yeah, that was that was a good playing, one. Playing huh? playing basketball at eight uh two oh one, I S two oh one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Had the different yeah. color t shirts and all that. Exactly. <laughs> you know. Yeah, I play I played with them a little bit. So uh, let's yeah. move, move along a little bit. Who is K W? K Dub? Yeah, K Dub. K Dub was uh well, how could I put this? He was like a snake in disguise to me, you know. Mm -hmm. You know, he, he was a friend of Fritz. You know what I mean? They did business for many years, but he was a snake all around the board. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. That's the type of individual I always see him as, you uh -huh. know? So he, 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 he slipped through the cracks and all that type of stuff, huh? Not so much slipping through the cracks, you know, because, you know, they had a longer relationship than me. Okay, I got you. you know, me, me and Fritz's relationship wasn't as long as him and K. Go, but, you know, he was a snake. He used to do a lot of backhand stuff, you okay. know what I mean? That wasn't right, you know? Right, 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 right. right. You know, that that caused a lot of conflict between him, both of them, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. But he, he, he ain't no good, man, you know? So what happened between you and Kate Duck? First of all, it goes back to when I was in prison. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? He was supposed to come and see me. He came and see me. We spoke about the situation there in prison. He was supposed to take care of something for me while I was in prison. Mm -hmm. But he ain't do nothing. His, own, his, own, his main reason for not doing nothing when I really thought about it is that he felt that I was going to come home and try to take the connect from him. Mm. But I wasn't concerned about that. I was concerned about getting out of prison. Damn so he left me in prison. Damn right. He didn't do nothing. Yeah, he didn't do nothing I asked him to do. Right, right. You know what I mean? That's why I ended up being in prison for 23 years. And while he in prison, he ended up catching that Fed bit. He in there talking stories about, yeah, I know I did wrong by Ace. I'm going to do this when I get home and do that. He get home. He reached out to Evelyn. Evelyn hit my mom's up. You know, we end up talking. So I put him to the test. You already failed me one time. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to put you to the test to see where you at. I ain't show no hamasi, no anger towards him. Mm -hmm. I want to see how you operate now. Yeah. So I put him to the test. You know what I mean? He failed the test. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. He was yeah. supposed to get something with the lawyer. And he didn't do nothing. I called back in two weeks. I ain't talked to him since. Wow. This was, this was 2004. Mm. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So he, he ain't no good. You know what I mean? Yeah, that's also, also, you know, in my heart, I believe he played a big part in Fritz's death too. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. You know? How you it's a fact. Let's talk about that. You want to talk about that a little bit? All right. Um, but the last time I spoke to Fritz, you know, I mean, he was crying to me. You know, I mean, he was he was so devastated and in pain that I was in prison for so long and I wasn't there to be around him. Mm -hmm. So he ended up giving the phone to K Dub. So I asked K Dub what's the situation with him. He told me he ain't feeling well, he's sick. I told K Dub, no, listen, take him to the hospital, admit him, don't tell nobody where he at, mm -hmm. and just make sure he's good. He started talking about, yeah, I got you, I read about this and that, but he ain't do nothing. Nothing. Mm -hmm. The last time I called home, Fritz was dead. Dang. 
So you can you can imagine how I feel. You know what I mean? Yeah. You know, the last time of me hearing his words, he cried at me. Yeah, right, right. You know what I mean? That's the that was it. Our whole conversation, he just was crying. You know. And that's and, the man, you know, and, and you locked up, and you feel like yeah, I can't do nothing to help him. I know that hurt. It's it still hurts today, man. Right. You know, even even talking about it now, it still hurts. Yeah, you yeah, know? yeah, yeah, yeah. Cause I, our our relationship was, you know, it wasn't about money. It wasn't about having this and that. It was a genuine love, man. You mm -hmm. know. Yeah, yeah. You can't you can't find that these days, man. No, you can't. You can't find it these days. There ain't, ain't nobody willing to give you they all they leg or nothing and don't ask for nothing in return. You know, that's the type of individual him and Chuck was, you know what I mean? They, they was truly real good brothers, man, to the yeah. bone, man. You know? Yo, how did, um, how, how did Fritz die? They, they allegedly trying to say it was HIV, but it wasn't no HIV. You know what I mean? Yeah. It was something. It was something that was poisoning his blood, but it wasn't no HIV that killed him. No AIDS. You know that's what everybody think. Right. You know what I mean? So I look at it that anybody who had access to his food or was buying food or getting stuff for him to eat, I put them in that position to be the one to do something like that. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. I, I have my suspicions. You know. Uh huh. You know. Yeah, that's crazy, man. Yeah, but he he didn't his his death his death certificates don't say nothing about no HIV or AIDS. Yeah, you know what I mean. Yeah, that's a that's a fact. That's crazy. But you know what? People always you know don't know something something and they just want to make up shit. You know what I mean? Because you know because there's a lot of people that pass away and the story that people put out there ain't the story that really happened. You know? Exactly. They just take it and just run with it like it's real true, but they don't know the facts. Yeah. They, they just they just spreading the rumor. Or they trying to turn somebody image or something. Exactly, you know. You know. And that's the same way. That's the same way with Kenny. He he just trying to tarnish my my character and all that. But you tarnish your own character when you start trying to talk dirty about me. Right, right, right. You know? His his problem is that he didn't appreciate how me and close Fritz was, and I was only with Fritz for a short period of time, and they've been together for years before me. Uh huh. So he couldn't even understand that. Right. It's just that I was true in my heart, all the way around the board. He wasn't, mm. and that's that's what hurts him. You know, they glad I'm here. They glad I'm in Barbados. You hear me? Yeah. They are glad I'm here. I honestly, I'm kind of glad I'm here too, mm. because it'll be a whole lot of drama. Wow. How long you How long you been home, bro? I've been home now six six years, two months, and two days. You, you, you got to count it, huh? It's a fact. Yes. So anyway, when you I count every, I count every day. I count every day, man. Every day is a blessing, man. It's a fact. You know, so um, how deep would you and Fritz, how much coke and money Fritz truly had? Fritz had... Fr <laughs> <laughs> hey, I had to ask you that because I know it, it, the story that he had, he was looking at it for everybody. He was a billionaire, <laughs> He wasn't a billionaire, but he had he had at least at least ten million plus, maybe. You know hear I me? Mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know that. I know that for a fact. Uh huh. He, he had it like that. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Let me give you an example. I'm gonna tell you something. When I had a situation that caused me to have to leave my home for a little bit, so that's what caused me and Fritz to end up staying on the stay together. Mm -hmm. So when he took me, when he took me to the house, he was like, yo, listen, this bedroom, nobody here. You can stay in this bedroom. This is my bedroom. He opened up the drawer. He said, listen, all this money here, whatever you need, use this money. Buy your clothes, buy food. I'm going to send a young lady down here to take care of you. You know, be clean the house and feed you and stuff and go buy your clothes. Which is, which is Tanya, my baby mother. Right. So, and after that, he told me, yo, this closet, I don't want you going in. I was like, all right, but you know, I'm young, I'm curious. I eventually went and looked in the closet to see what it was. Uh-huh. It was it was six and a half million dollars in the closet. Oh wow. Yeah. <laughs> so one day I asked him, I said, Why you trust me so much? He said, Your mama told you not to go in that closet. Mm -hmm. I said, Yeah. He said, I know you went in there. He said, When I gave the connect the money and I told them what it was, they told me back the same exact figure. He said, you had plenty of days that you could have took that money and left, but it took me a while to find you, but you didn't take a penny of that money. I know I could trust you. Wow, that was that was a 
that was some homie time, but that was a little test too, though. Exactly. So he took he took me to the closet door and he showed me how he know I looked in the closet. Right. And I still use that trick up to the day, man. Wow. Did, yep. did you ever uh, get to meet um, Fritz Connect? Plenty of times, yeah. But I always, you know, I always sit to the side and let them do their talking. You know what I mean? Yeah, you know. And when I go when I go to their restaurant, they take care of me like you know I was him. Okay, okay. You know, you know, you remember the uh, restaurant in City Island called the Neptunes? Yeah, yeah. That was dumb. Oh wow! But well, they moving like that, huh? Yeah. Okay. So I was on the screen, your, your 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 face froze for a minute. That might be the inter internet connection you got over there, right? No, yeah, probably yeah. I see that. Yeah, I can hear you talking though, so we good with that. But um, what the hell happened? Huh? huh? I don't know what happened. Yeah, it might come back. That's the internet. But um, let me see. So, so how many um, how many stash houses? How, how many how many stash houses Fritz had about? We had about two. It, it two joints, yeah. And the only ones know is your him, so that's because he trusts you like that, pretty much. Exactly. But then eventually he ended up using K Dub and, and him dog. Say that again. Eventually he ended up using Kenny Wilson and him dog. Okay, okay. Because it was it was so much money to be picked up, he wasn't able to make all the rounds, and I wasn't able to make all the rounds, so we ended up using them. To help pick up money. So I end up giving them keys to the money house. Okay, okay. So you can imagine what happened after he passed away. Oh, man. Yeah. Oh, they done went crazy on that. It was happy. Hello? Hello? That loyalty, that loyalty went out the window. Exactly. If, if if there was really if there was really any loyalty or integrity or anything, that's when it should have been done. Exactly, should have brought all that to you the know? family or to to the people that was involved. Exactly, with. exactly. Not they ain't do nothing. Question. Give it to the family. Exactly. And let the family. If they want to look out for you. Look out for you. Exactly. They ain't do nothing. That's crazy, man. So how many how many keys would you say he was getting uh, uh, per week? Woo! Two, three hundred, two, three hundred, like every week and a half. Dang. Easy, cause it was coming. Easy, and then he showed love. Moment. He showed love and all that. Exactly, because he paid for his own shit. And, and then back in um eighty nine, moment you probably don't remember, but there was a barge coming through the East River that got intercepted and it had mad drugs on it. You remember that? Yeah, yeah, I heard, I heard something about that. Oh yeah, that was that was his. So then he had to wait a while for them to try to get it back to him. Hmm. But they already know. They already know that you know he good for it, so wasn't no problem, right? Exactly, because he already put the money up front for it already. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, so that's why they started flooding him so crazy. I was loving it. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, man, right hand man, I know you was loving it. Yeah, I was loving it, man, because you know it, it made us more. It made us. Not more closest, but it made us more uh, tighter. Right. We, we made sure that we looked out for each other, making sure that we we safe with each other. We calling each other every two, three hours, checking you good. Mm -hmm. That's how we was moving, you know what I mean? If he didn't hear from me for two, three hours, he'd run around looking for me. Mm. That's that vice versa. That's that bond, you know? Yeah. Damn, what's on with this video, man? Yeah, yeah. I see. I mean, your face still and your voice there, so that everybody know it's you, you know? Yeah. Um, so how many um, blocks in Harlem did Chris control? He basically controlled just 12th Street. That was his block. But, you know, everybody he's he's hitting, you might as well say it's his block because it's his product. Right, right. He was basically making bosses. A boss that's making bosses, you know? Mm. Everybody. All the way up, Lettuce Avenue, all them guys, man. Right, right. They said he, hit, he was hitting Rich Porter off too, right? That's a fact. Yeah. He was taking care of Rich, man. Mm. God rest his God bless, you know, rest his soul, yeah, man. God bless the dead always, yep. But he should, he should be still alive today, man, if he just listened, man. Mm. 
That was, that was, you know, I mean, his son talk, I, I've explained it to his son and everything. I said, your pops just didn't listen, man. Mm. You were. He just, if he'd have listened, that outcome would have been different, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just didn't listen, you know? Yeah, was, um, was, um, Fritz ever extorted? They try. You heard of the Wild Cowboys, right? Yeah, I heard of them. Yeah, they try. The Wild Cowboys was from all over, right? Yeah, they was from Jersey. They was up from uh, Rockland County, upstate. They was from the Bronx. Some was over there from College Avenue, over there near the Yankee Stadium. They was all over. It was a, a mixture of people, you know? Mm -hmm. Some of them was white as well. Man, they, they, was, they had a, a, a clan, a, a crew of people, huh? Exactly. They have they have police badges and everything. They're using the white dudes as police. Mm. Wow. And so they so they try to make an attempt on them and, and, and what happened? They try they try to snatch him up on 116th Street in Manhattan Avenue. Right. But he realized he realized they wasn't real police, so he started screaming in the streets, oh help, help. So you know, people started coming around the, you know, around the police car where he at. Mm -hmm. So they eventually got in the car and left. But they tried. They still try anyway. They end up sending somebody in the block to, you know, watch what's going on. When his baby mom's left to go home, they was in the building waiting for her. And they intercepted her and pushed her in the apartment and just took some money and some jewelry and stuff like that. You know? Mm -hmm. The next the next day, they came through 12th Street and passed Fritz a note with uh, his girl, his uh, Lorraine, which is his son, mother, his, her ring. With a note talking about, yeah, we had your baby mom one time. We could get her again. We want 500000 mm. You know what happened after that. Yeah, okay. You know? Yeah, yeah, that's real. Yeah. So, um, who is Handog? Who killed Handog? This dude named Vincent Paul from the Bronx. He killed the one who killed uh, Handog. I ran into him in prison and everything. You know? I was going to do something to him, but I didn't do nothing to him because the story that I was hearing from him dog family, the way they told me things was going down, didn't make no sense to me. Mm. Because I know him. If him pull out a gun on somebody and they did what they say he, the, he did, him was going to take care of that immediately. Mm -hmm. So, But I, I realized that him knew that the guy was telling him the truth because somebody robbed him dog girl and shot her in the leg. So they was running around saying that with this, this dude named Vincent. So when Hen ran up on the dude, the dude tells Hen, yo, it wasn't me. I was locked up such and such. Let me show you the paperwork. Now, if it was true, Hen would have took care of that immediately. But he didn't. So Hen, I believe Hen believed that the dude was telling the truth. So what he did, he kept on, you know, intimidating the dude, chasing the dude down with a gun, seeing him with his mom, disrespect him and everything. He got tired of it. Mm -hmm. He left and he, he left and he went down south and he was chilling. So he ended up buying a gun and came back to New York. Mm. His intention was that he wasn't going to look for him and do no harm to him. But if him run up on him with some nonsense, he was going to handle his business. So one day, him was in a restaurant and one of his men seen him. And he came and went and told, yo, listen, homie over there, such and such. And he ran up on him. He shot him in the legs because he knew him had on a vest. And then he walked over to him and him said, yo, please don't shoot me. And he said he already shot him. So he killed him. Mm. That's that's the story. That's 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 out of homeboy mouth, because the way the, the way the family was telling me it, it didn't make no sense. Because I know Henry. Henry would have handled the dude immediately, mm -hmm. without without any questions. He would have took care of that. But for him to keep intimidating the dude, chasing the dude down with the gun, there was missing parts to the stories that they wasn't filling me in with. Mm -hmm. Wow. So when I ran into homeboy, he filled in all the, all the pieces that was missing from the story. You know what I mean? Uh-huh. He was telling me the same thing the family was saying, but he was adding in the pieces that was missing. Wow. So I said, you know what? Ain't nothing I could do about that. He called for it, you know? Yeah, 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 yeah. That, that was man, my man and everything. I love him and everything, but he's just he just went crazy, man. He just, you know, me having, you know, Taking that money out of the house, and he feel he the king now. Nobody could tell him nothing. Mm. Oh, get a little cocky so sometimes when you get that money. Exactly, he became he became reckless. You know, yeah. the money the money basically was thinking for him. Mm. You know, 
You know, sometimes when I speak the truth of how I see things, people don't like it, but it's a fact. You know, man, I ain't going to sugarcoat it to make it sound sweet or not. I'm going to give it up raw. Either you accept it or you don't accept it. I feel you, bro. So let me ask you a question. So Chris owned a brown store on 19th Street where Netflix and the film Luke Cage. Is Fritz exactly. Family? Exactly. But his uh, sister-in-law got the building. Okay. The build the building next door I own. Okay. But you can imagine what you can imagine what she did while I was in prison. She ain't trying to turn it over to my family. She kept the building. Mm. So you see how you think people you could trust people, they don't do nothing right. It's crazy, man. You ain't gotta tell me, I know. You know, when you show all that love and soon something happened, man, that you know, motherfuckers exactly. don't like, they don't appreciate it and they just, you know, show their true colors and shit. That's a fact. That's just like being in prison for 23 years. Everybody show their true colors. Oh, yeah. You know? I know something about it. Trust me. Yeah. But I don't, I don't swear that. I don't, you know, that's that's behind me now, though, you know? Absolutely. Absolutely. Right. So, um, so what happened with Fritz Money? God's no way it was that. It's all over. Everybody got a little piece except the family, you know? Except the family. Except the family. Family ain't getting nothing. Not a dime. That's crazy. Bro. And you know, these dudes running around talking about how much love they got for Fritz. Yo, that's my brother. But I ain't seen nobody put a mural on the wall on 112th Street in 20 something years. Dang. In 29 years now. Hello? And you talking about you got Fritz, for, you know, you got love for Fritz? To do a mural on the wall for two, three hundred dollars, four hundred dollars? Yeah, I could never do that. Come on, as as much family as he feed around there, how many how many hustlers he took care of? Mm -hmm. And I told with my child, I got love. It wasn't no love. It was fake love. You heard? Yeah. All yeah. around the board. I didn't even think about that. Each, you know why? Because you out through Harlem, you see murals of a lot of people, right? I mean, and and, and you ride through the block, people are like your Fritz used to live in that building. Say, so why he ain't got no mural up over there? You know okay. Oh, all right, mm. all right. We on the same page. Yeah, I ain't think about it until you said that. That's crazy. Yeah, I said that years ago, man. So I tell, I tell, dude, stop talking that fake love. Y'all got love. I don't want to hear that. Keep the, keep his name out your mouth. Mm. Cause y'all didn't do nothing to represent to show that you do have true love for him. Right. You know, yeah. even up to the day, I'm still in touch with his family. We we kick it all the time. So there ain't no cookouts, ain't no murals or nothing with Fritz. Nothing, nothing. He just rest in peace and so he just passed away and gone, and he was just an old memory in everybody's head that say they got true love for him, basically. That's crazy, man. And all I hear is how Fritz looked out for for everybody. The whole Harlem. The whole Harlem. And a lot of the legends that you that you all from first out, from first Avenue all the way to Broadway. From downtown to uptown. Mm. All up in Sugar Hill, you name it. He all over. Mm. Crazy, man. I know. All I could do is shake my head to that one. That's crazy, man. I know. And every time I heard it, I never got a chance to meet him. I might have saw him in passing. But every time I, I hear a story about Fritz, I hear the same stories, which was good. I don't know if they all true, but it was never nothing bad. You know what I'm saying? And it's like he looked out for people, and a lot of people got names because he the one that supplied them. And, and where, where's where the love at? Exactly, it's true. He did he did all that. Everything you said, he did. Man, he did that and more. Man, he helped out so many people. Man, he had a genuine heart. Man, it, his whole thing wasn't really about the money. Man, it was just. He just wanted to see everybody happy. He wanted to see everybody making and getting through life. Mm -hmm. That was his main concept. It wasn't just about the money. He used to throw money out the window just to give away. Mm -hmm. Come on. You think anybody would do that? Nah, man. I'm keeping my money. I don't think y'all deserve it, but he didn't care about it. Right, right. You know what I mean? It, ain't, it, ain't serve, it, it, it didn't make him who he was. Right, right. You know what I mean? He, he did what he was doing, but in his heart, he was a different individual. I mean, he was about he was about his people, and that's the difference today. Everybody about self; they ain't about the peoples no more. Right. 
So that's why we're so divided. So how old would Fritz be right now if he didn't pass away? He be all uh, sixty two. Oh, he be sixty two. Going on sixty four. Come on, man. Can't test me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, nah, I'm hearing what I'm saying, though, right? When I'm yeah. Saying that, um, how would you think life would be in the neighborhood if Fritz didn't get get sick and he was still here? First of all, in ninety one, that was the, that was the year that everything was done. We, we was dead. That's We've been stepping off from the game. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? He would have made sure a lot of certain people that have been all right. You know what I mean? As far as with money, anybody, old timers in the building, if they needed any assistance or help or anything, he always would have been there for them. But right. we was leaving New we was leaving New York. We was going down south. Uh-huh. And that's we we was getting into real estate. That was our plan to get into real estate. There you go. <laughs> yeah, that was our whole plan. That's why I started buying the building. Right. You know what I mean? That's why I bought the building next to 119th Street in Lynn Salem. That's why I bought the building. Mm -hmm. That was my first project. Right. And he, but unfortunately, I ended up going to prison. Yeah. You know? Yeah, yeah. It's, it's, it's crazy the way everything went. You know, I went to prison. Then um, three months later, Chuck get killed. Then three months later, Fritz passed away. It was like, you know, three months behind each other, man. Man. You know that that hurt. That hurt, man. Those were my those were my two best friends. Those was, those was those were my heart, man. Those were my. You know I mean, I, I love them. I love them more than I love my own biological brothers, man. man. Because you know the love is different, man. It was a total different love, man. You know there wasn't no animosity. There wasn't no no jealousy. There ain't no no envy or nothing. It was just genuine love, man. Yeah. For you, man. Before Chuck go home every night, he stopped to make sure I'm good. Mm -hmm. Before he go to the house, come on. Mm. That's different. He's stopping to check to make sure you good. Yeah, I'm good. All right, man. I'm heading home. Okay, get in safe. Oh, wow. he be he be he be there on the drop of the dime. Mm. So I'm having sex with his girl. I could call him. Yo, Chuck, I need you right now. Okay, I give me five minutes. He there. Mm. That's the type of, you know, type of individuals they are. Right, 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 right. So, hey, it ain't no delay in them. Mm -hmm. Yo, give me a half an hour or none of that. They, they, they coming. Right. And that's how I was with them. I'm coming. Exactly. Y'all had that type of, that type of code, yeah. that bond. Exactly, man. That loyalty bond, you know, yeah, that, that loyalty. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. Exactly, you know. Yeah, they know when, when the call comes, you call them for a reason. Exactly. And I always say loyalty is family. You know, I mean, you 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 got family that y'all only related through blood, but y'all might not be really be family. Right. You know, yeah. when you got loyal loyal people that's loyal to you, and you loyal to them, that's family. Right. All around the board. You know what I mean? That's 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 true family. You know, you might be related, you know, by blood. I might have a brother. That's my brother, only by blood. But we ain't really family. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? You ain't displaying how family's supposed to be. We just related. Exactly. By blood. By blood. That's it. By blood. No action. Exactly. Yeah. You know, and, and Chuck and them, they, they, they were my brothers. They had the loyalty and all that. Mm -hmm. Those were my brothers, man. That's my family right there. Respect that, bro. Yeah. It's, you know, since I lost them, I don't, I don't get close to nobody, you know? I'm down here. I'm in the island by myself. I don't associate with none of these people, man. Right, right. Because I know what I'm going to get. Mm. Nothing but headaches. <laughs> I feel you, man. Let me ask you a question. Do you feel that, that jail saved you? Because you said everybody was dying by threes. Do you think it might have saved you from something? You know what I'm saying? To a maybe to a degree. Mm -hmm. But... I was very cautious, you know what I mean? I was, I kept that thing on me 24-7. I don't care. If police run up on me, I'm letting it loose. <laughs> you know what I mean? They, they, they could go check. They got they got a police documents on me and firing on police already. Yeah. You know what I mean? Uh -huh. So I don't have no problem with doing that. <laughs> but I was cautious. The only thing that I see is that when Fritz passed away, they knew that I was the next one in line. Right. 
Right, okay. So I knew I knew that the feds would have been coming trying to come down on me. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? I, I, I was told that already. Okay. You know? I was told that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, so if say if Fritz would have passed away while you was home, you you right hand man, you use the next in charge. You, you took charge of the whole enterprise, pretty much. If I wanted to, okay. But I wasn't because I already made the decision with him that I'm stepping off with him. Okay. But 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 believe me now, at the beginning I was like, nah, this is too sweet. <laughs> It's too sweet to just walk away. <laughs> but I really, when, but when I thought about it, the way we, we sat down and we talk about it, it was worth what he's saying doing. Uh -huh. You know what I mean? We was going to get into that real estate because real estate was, it was out there back then. Yeah, it was easy you know? too. Yeah, it was easy. A lot it was easy. easy. Exactly. It was easier. So that's where we was going to get the money at. Yeah. Legal, legally. You know what I mean? And that only so had money. Y'all had a lot of money to play with. Y'all could have got a lot of property, a lot of land. It's exactly. A lot of those brownstones at home. Yep. They was going away for barely pennies, you know? Yep. Now they selling them for a million dollars, man. And better. Three three to ten million easy. <laughs> Cha ching <laughs> You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I know, man. You ain't got to tell me. It's, oh. it's a lot of opportunities that blow because of me being in prison. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I wasn't an individual that was just spending my money reckless. Nah, hell no. I was doing the same thing he was doing, stacking that paper. Right. That's it. Because he used to always say, stack your paper for a rainy day. Mm -hmm. You know? And that's what I used to do. So, um, let me ask you a question. Are you ever coming back to New York? I got something in the mix right now, so I'm working on that. I could, I could come back anytime I want, but I don't want to come back illegal. Right. I'd rather come back the right way so I don't have to be dealing with them on my back. Because, you know, if I come back illegal and some pe certain people see me, they're going to call police. <laughs> oh, he back. You know? So it. I'm not trying to go through that. When I come back and you see me, it will be legal. Okay. Ain't, ain't nothing to talk about when I start knocking on your head. <laughs> you going to walk through the blockades? No crescents. <laughs> That's a fact. Yo, they, you come walk through the block, they got like they seen a ghost, man. I know. I don't care, though. Yeah. His, his sister still live down. His, I'm definitely going to the block. That's right. You know? You got to go through the block. You probably going to be the one go through the block and put that mirror up, bro. You ain't got to tell me. You know what I mean? It's a, that's true. And I'm going to tell you right now, if you put that mirror up, Frisk is going to be there in, 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 up in heaven. His spirit going to catch that and be like, man, that's the one I want to put it up anyway. I never looked at it like that. You, you hear that's that, that's, Sometimes, yeah, things I know, happen, you know, life is for a a strange sometimes. Things, you might want things to happen a certain way, but sometimes they meant to go another way, which is more meaningful. I think it would be more True. meaningful if you had to, you was the reason why that mirror went up, man. Mm. You know what I mean? Yeah, I agree with you. I mean, it's been all this time. I, I never looked at it. I never looked at it the way you say that Fritz would say, you know, that's who I want to put it up. Yeah. yeah. I never looked at it like that. Fritz is gone, but his spirit's still alive. You know what I'm saying? It's a fact. Yeah. He lives in me every day. Yeah. Yeah. I talk, to, I talk to him and Chuck every day with inside me. You hear me? Mm hmm They don't never die. They ain't never die. They still alive in me, man. Yeah. You know, but I'm they physical is gone, but spiritually they always here with me. Yeah, and they're not just here with you. They're here with a, with a few people that I come across, good people. Because yeah. I keep hearing the name Fritz, 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 Fritz. That's his spirit, man. He's still in Harlem, that's, you know? That's, yeah. You that's know? how it was back in the 80s. All you hear was Fritz in the street. Who is this Fritz? Fritz, who he look like? <laughs> One thing they said about Fritz, though, he was never flashy, man. He was just... He never what? Let me tell you how nice he was, you hear me? The situation with, with Rich Porter, he ended up calling Fritz's house from his mom's house while the FBI got the phones tapped. So they ended up going to Fritz's house and was waiting on him. So they ended up going upstairs and knocked on the door and asked him, is Fritz here? Fritz told him, nah. 
He just left a little while ago. So they said, well, next time he come back, tell him that the FBI here wanted to speak with him. But he was already speaking to them. They didn't even know it was him. Mm -hmm. That's how nice he was. Right. Wow. And from, because when, you know, they, they might have thought it might have been him. So when they waited downstairs on her 18th Street for him, he cut through the building on the other side. Because in his building, they got a ramp that cut through another building to bring you out on her 17th Street. And he left out on her 17th Street. Right. But he was, he was real smooth, man. He was, he was smooth. You know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He'd be walking the street looking like a regular person. You'd never know who he was. Mm. You remember the movie Carlito Way? Yeah, yeah, Carlito, yeah. The dude was walking with the lamp? Uh-huh. That's how he was. In disguise all the time. All the time. Yep. You never know he was that dude like that. Exactly. Because you know, he was a smooth. Of, a lot of Harlem cats, when they get that money, they got to go get the whip. You know, they got to go get the jewels. True. They got to throw the knots around, you know. That wasn't his yeah. style at all, huh? At, at all. The only time he got vehicles is for purposes to move stuff. Mm. That's it. Well, it wasn't just to buy a vehicle to drive around and look pretty. It was for a purpose. Mm -hmm. Just like one day he told me, see, oh, listen, man, we got to get something bigger to move all this stuff. I was like, what? I went down to Dog, Dog's um, Ram down on uh, Broadway. I think it was on uh, 12th Avenue. I went and bought a Dog's Ram 250 van, a customized van, so we could load that stuff up. <laughs> I came back, popped into the block. When I seen him, I gave him the key. I said, yo, here, here goes some keys. There's a spare key that's yours. He said, this for I said, you see that van? I just went and bought that for us. Right. He's like, what? I said, like, yeah. <laughs> and we, we used my van as a transport. Okay. Because most of the time, the police think it's the old timers driving them customized yeah, vans. Yeah, with the TV in it, George? Exactly, with the, with the electric bed in the back. Yeah. <laughs> With the four captain chairs. With the little ladder on, on, on the door in the back. Exactly. <laughs> Still remember my plate number. My plate number is ASH 231. <laughs> uh, man, yep. you ride through that, man. It, you know, everybody else riding around flashy. They ain't think you're doing nothing that. Exactly. Like, that keeps the heat off. That got, keeps the heat off you. Yeah. Y'all got like 200 keys in that motherfucker. They don't even know. Exactly. <laughs> wow. That's smart. He's excited yeah. to get that, so he don't spend no money. Huh? He just be stacking paper. He's just stack paper. That's it, man. He wasn't the only money he really would say. I would say he would spend is playing numbers. Mm. Yes, he'll, he'll go. He'll put. He'll go play a straight number for like ten thousand mm. or, or, or a five thousand dollar combo. Mm. So I used to see the slips. I was like, yo, he crazy. <laughs> <laughs> yo, he fucking. <laughs> But when he, when he hit, he hit. <laughs> hey, listen, that's probably why he, when, that's why he, he um, did what he did, because he probably hit for crazy money. So put some of that back, he put do. some of the money he won anyway, you know? Yeah, he do. He used to be hitting, he used to be hitting for crazy money. 150000 200000 He used to be hitting crazy. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. That's the only thing I would say he used to bet, like, a lot. That. Sometimes he'd gamble, but not really. He wouldn't gamble too much. He'd play a number better than gambling. When numbers was big back then, and, and I don't even call that spending money. I call that trying to make more money. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, that's true. You know? Yeah, he was trying to make more money. Yeah, you know? Everything about him that I could tell about his story is about getting money some type of way. Yeah, that's a fact. You know? And he's looking Just like the garage. Yeah. Giving people just opportunity like the club to get their money right, you know? Exactly. Just like the club, the garage. That was about money. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yeah. You remember the garage? Huh? You remember the club called the garage? Oh, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> absolutely, man. Yeah, that was the spot. That was the real spot. You get some money in yeah. there, too. Yeah, a lot of money used to be up in there. <laughs> ah, you used to be up in there gambling crazy. <laughs> yeah, back then, niggas was pinging and all that shit, right? <laughs> yeah. Yep. It was cool to sniff. <laughs> yeah, it was back then. Yeah. But he was never he was he was an he don't drink he didn't drink or nothing. The only thing he might drink was a little champagne. Mm -hmm. That'd be like special occasions. But other than that, he didn't drink or nothing. Mm. He he was he stayed sober. He he kept a clear mind all the time. All the time. 
all the time. He he stayed thinking too, boy. He lived That's what him. I loved about him, man. Huh? That's what I loved about him. He always he always thinking, you know. Straight business, man, yeah. man. If I was going through a problem, and he knew he knew when I go through a problem, because I'd be doing the same thing. He'd be doing. I'd be in my room just thinking. And he'd be like, yo, what's going on? I said, hey, no. He said, hey, knock it off. Come tell me what's going on. And we had talk about mm -hmm. And we end up finding a solution to how to deal with the problem. Mm -hmm. He was that individual. Yeah, man. He took a lot of the wildness out of me. I got you. Uh, yeah. Because I, I, was, I was reckless. I, was, I wasn't trying to hear nothing. <laughs> he put that thing uh, out when you got to do it, huh? There are no crescents, you know, because people think because I was slim that I was, you know, I could, they could just push me around. Nah, you gonna push this hammer around? Push this hammer around? <laughs> and I'm not, I'm not going for that. I can understand if I'm creating problems, then I'm entitled to get what comes to me. But don't come to me creating no problems for me, right? Because you want, you want to prejudge me because of how I look, because of how I built, mm -hmm. and want to cause problems for me? No, I wasn't going for that. Yeah. I'm gonna give you what you asked him for. Mm -hmm. yep. I feel you, man. Yeah, but you know, I calmed down. Yeah, calmed yeah. Down. I did a lot more thinking. Yeah, you know, you we, we went through you went through what you went through. You know what I'm saying? You're home now, you know, you're overseas and you work you worked on your way back, and that's what it's all about right now, you know? Yeah. Yeah. So I'm just taking it easy, you know. I just, I'm just just trying to take it one day at a time, man, and just enjoy life, you know? Yes, sir, man. Enjoy your freedom. It's a blessing, it's a blessing to wake up every morning, man. Yeah, and you ain't got to stand on nobody's count either. At all. You know? Stand on my count. <laughs> yeah, uh, yo, H, man, but it was a pleasure talking to you, man. We about to run out of time. You, you know? too as well. And, I uh, want to tell all... Go ahead, go ahead, talk, go ahead. I want to tell all the viewers and stuff, you know, you go... Uh, Pick up the book from Amazon or Harlem Westside Publishing dot com. That's where you can be able to purchase the book of Fritz Calling the Harlem Club. It's an official read book. You know, it's gonna drop a lot of knowledge, it's gonna clear up a lot of false allegations with people is putting out there as well, you know. The book is definitely a book you need to be putting in your archives. You I definitely got it in my archives. That's what I'm talking about. And also, it was a blessing to be on the show and to express certain words and my feelings about certain individuals and, you know, how I feel about my brothers, you know? Yeah. And thanks for, thank you for this platform. Yo, man, yo, anytime, man, we can get you back on and you get anything else popping, whatever, man. You know, you're right. fine, man. We good, man, you know? I think okay, no problem. Show. You know, I like to speak to dude that was dead, got the real stories, you know what I'm saying? That was in True. the trenches, you know? Because, yeah. you know, it's better for you to tell them than somebody else to tell them. That's a, that's a fact. Yeah. You, hear, you hear from the true source, you know everything is official, you know? Exactly. You know, everything I say, I back up on my words. And even the individuals that I speak about, they know I'm speaking the truth. Mm -hmm. But they would try to fabricate it, but they ain't going to tell the truth. They know, in their heart, they know I'm speaking the truth. Right. You know, mm -hmm. but they're gonna say something else different just to please other people. Right. That's how they move. You know, that's that manipulation game. Mm -hmm. But I tell you one thing, though, Ace is home, and you know he, he will be coming back to New York one of these days soon. So let's keep it easy, fellas. You know, let's, let's keep it easy. You better keep ducking. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, Ace, I got you. I got you. I got your number now, man. I'm a chop it yeah, up. Yeah, you can hit man. Yeah, no question. I ain't got no problem with that, man. Yeah, man. You, you know, I like your energy, man. You know, feel free to hit me anytime, brother. All right. All Same right. way here, brother. Yeah, stay All right. safe and enjoy your day. I want to thank y'all for tuning in. You know, we got my man Harlem Legend. You know, we got Ace right here. You know, and I want y'all to, you know, pick up that book, like he said, and show that support, you know? All right, Ace. All right, brother. You have a blessed day. You be safe out there. Keep protecting yourself, you know? Always, man. Always. Always. Man. I don't want no problems, man, but you know. Y'all got to get with the program, champ. 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 I got to get with the program, champ. I got to get with the program, champ.
Y'all gotta get with the program, champ. Bring him, 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 champ. Y'all gotta get with the program, 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 champ.